I do want to just um, sift out two kinds of things. So I think one thing is a saint's private revelation. Another thing is a historical archaeological object. And they don't necessarily coincide. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got a lot of, in my mind right now, and I want to answer his question too, but <laughs> I've just got to go to the stigmata because this is a case in point, right? Many stigmatists have the nail wounds in the center of the palms, and yet on the shroud, it's in desktop space. I'll, I'll pull it up just so we can have a graphic that, but if you look like under the muscle in the thumb, you'll have, if you were to bend, so put your uh, thumb, thumb and, and pinky, pinky together, together right. bend down like 90 degrees, um, and now under the muscle in your thumb, you'll get a little divot. At least some of us have this. Okay. Do you have this? Uh, I, I've got a, I'm not sure there's the camera. Sure, yeah. I've got a, this like tendon yeah, yeah, yeah. right in the center. That's but where there, it goes, there's huh? a, That's where the nail went in <sighs> and it penetrated out 1.5 centimeters higher on the opposite side. And so according to a French surgeon by the name Pierre Barbet, who writes a book called A, a Doctor at Calvary, he does this experiment on fresh cadavers. Sorry for the macabre detail here a little, but it, no, let's it's, do it. It, it's, it's, it's really worth just to understand like so much of my, that's the kind of science I want to give my body to give, give your body yeah, to, yeah, to kind of like for science yeah, like, to was, understand more about the crucifixion. Okay. I'm glad to see you, not me. No, no, because this is bad news. Seriously. When, if, when well, the bad news about putting the nail here is, is that there are two nerves that pass just through the spot. It's the ulnar nerve and the median nerve, mm. and they don't control. It's not just that they control the movement of your fingertips, but they're, they're sense nerves that are going to send shock waves of pain through your central nervous system. I meant once in the, I'm dead. You oh, once you're dead. That. Oh, once yeah, you're dead. I wasn't dead. saying well, I want someone no to use. crucify me no, now. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. I was going to think of you as a hero, but no, no, not no, you just no, dropped no, down no, enough. No, that's, that would have been that's an idiot. insanity. <laughs> so, so we've got really good reason to okay. think it wasn't through the palms of the hands. Right. And so this has been asked, like, Jesus, hold, if the shroud were authentic, surely we would see that the nail wounds would be in the hands. Are you going to tell me that all those stigmatists Padre Pio included were wrong. And and thanks be to God, it's the stigmatists, it's th themselves who answer this question, so I don't have to. Ah, good. And they and they say, look, don't think that this is how he was fast fastened historically. He must have been uh, fixed in a more permanent way. But l when you see the stigmatists, you immediately understand those are the wounds of Jesus, which is exactly the point. Like for our sake. <laughs> for understanding like if Paul, your wrists were bleeding well well paul would say is like look i bear the marks of <clears throat> christ right so there's this sense of there's a credibility because he is sharing he's filling up what is lacking in the sufferings of christ to use the words of colossians 1 24 right there's something like okay christ the head in heaven is glorified he's suffering no more but in his mystical body he continues to suffer how do you convey that idea if, if all of our artwork if all of our churches have down through the centuries depicted christ crucified with the nail ones in the hands it's the way to communicate effectively mm. even if it's not historically true that those are the wounds of that you participate in the wounds of christ is to put the nail ones in here in the palms but we know and pierre Babe tested this in the 1930s and then publishes in the 50s if you put a nine inch nail with a square cross section through this portion of the palm after just 10 minutes and with a little shove it comes right through what is just soft tissue. There's no transversal support here. There's no way it could sustain the weight of a human body, not even half the weight of a human body. And in fact, we know from the first century literature that you could be crucified for some two weeks and not die. Do you know that in some instances they would little variations of crucifixion could be employed. So you could like give a little sedile, a little seat mm -hmm. so that some of the weight could be redistributed in such a way that even if the crows had come and pecked out your eyes, you're, you're, you're still alive. You're not bleeding that much on the shroud. It's when they take out the nail. Now the faucet is opened. Now the blood can flow. You're not actually uh, uh, bleeding that much. Hard to reproduce, um, especially at the wrist, the blood, the flow of blood. Should we look and, at that uh, next? Yeah, so let's, let's look at that because this, um, I want to go to way down to the point of crucifixion where we see the wounds in the hands. And I, th I must have gone past it. Um, because this is his death. Here we go. Yeah, so there's a bifurcation in the blood stain here. I'm looking at slide. Is this a 39? 39. 39. So, uh, of course, Jesus is hanging from the cross. So when he's on the ground, he would be at a 90 degree angle. Um, 
And I'll tell you what, let's, let me, let me go through the whole process for you. Go to slide number 37. And so the stipes, like that's the, um, the, the vertical beam, it's already planted in the ground okay. ready to, cause this is the execution site. This is Mount Calvary. And they were ready to receive the, those who would be put to death. And so what you were carrying had pre-established holes mm. and it had a fixture to receive the, the patibulum, the horizontal beam. And so all the centurion had to do is lay the victim out flat, stretch out his hands, um, 90 degrees to his body, take a nine inch nail in, in one hand, a hammer in the other, you know, drive it into the wrist and it would go through the hole and now fix him, his, his hand to, to the cross. He'd get to the other side and he'd have to make the wrist line up with a pre-established hole. If it doesn't reach, he makes it reach by, by dislocating the shoulder and then driving in the nail. And so, um, that is what some have suggested about the man of the shroud, a dislocated shoulder. And then he's made to stand up in the, um, the vertical position. And we seldom think about this transition, don't we? So two men yeah. would, would uh, grab either end. What number is that? This is uh, 38. 38. Forward, okay, sorry. Yep. Yeah. And so he's, uh, he's now hoisted up and plopped down on the vertical piece. And now he hangs from 90 degrees. He sags 25 degrees. And for at least a moment all of the weight is, of his body is hanging on those two nails in his hands. Um, and it's only when they put a nail in his feet that they can redistribute the weight. But let me look to slide 39, because this is what shows how there's a blood, how there's a blood flow from the wrist. And there's a bifurcation pattern here of about five to seven degrees. And this is very strange. Like, why do we have two flows of blood? And the answer is that in this position, you can't breathe out what you need to do because what's happening is as you're, as you're in this position, your pleural cavity. So you have this pleura is this double membrane that envelops your lungs and it fills with body fluid as you slowly asphyxiate that you would asphyxiate quite quickly. If your hands were together, do you know that the Nazis knew this to, to, if you, you want to hang someone from the rafters and kill them quickly, just hang them with your hands together. And that stretches out these intercostal muscles. The, the muscles that control your breathing between the ribs, and you can't exhale. This is why the victims start kicking the air so that they spontaneously they want to, to breathe. They, they can't help it. Um, but of course, when you're on the cross, this is a debilitating factor, if not a cause of death, because now the hands are spread out, and so you last longer. It's, they were protracting on purpose your agony um, by giving you uh, you know, a nail in your feet that actually allows you to sustain, sustain the weight of your body. Now you can press down on the nail in your feet, pull and twist on the nail in your hands, kind of throw out your hip in such a way that now your muscles can relax and you can breathe out at last, but you can't hold that position for any length of time. And so when you're, you know, your muscles are on fire, you collapse again until you can't stand it anymore and you have to push up. And now you're, so what I'm trying to suggest is that there are two positions of your hands, even though there's an ulnar nerve and mulnar, and the median nerve that I told you are when exposed in World War II, there were soldiers who had a median nerve exposed. And if they didn't get morphine, some preferred to commit suicide than to endure the excruciating pain. And that is, by the way, the exact word for this. Do you know that the word excruciating <laughs> comes from excruciatus? out of the cross. In other words, that's the root, the crux. Wow. The, so th this was a pain that is so unique. It gets its own word. It's, it was engineered to be the sumum supplicium. That's what the Romans thought the cross to be the highest of all punishments. They were going to put you on display in a prominent area where there were passersby all the time. So as to say, don't do what this guy did or get ready to suffer the same. And so he would be agonizing in front of your eyes. And in this way, uh, if that were me, I wouldn't want to budge it a millimeter, but you have to, to breathe. You can't help it. So it's these self-inflicted pains as he's going up and down. Can you imagine if that's what it is to breathe? What is it to speak? Like I always, I thought like, I, I, mm -hmm. this is what helps me about the shroud actually. It's like, it's not because I have some morbid fixation with pain or like blood and guts and things. I don't believe me. Um, but this is the most radical love the world has ever known, right? To steal an expression from uh, Pope Ratzinger. J Joseph Ratzinger said that before he was Pope, I think. Um, but this is divine love on display 
in a language that is appropriate for, like when you translate divine love into human language, words just won't do. Um, this is Jesus stretching his out his hands wide on the cross as if to say, this is how much I love you. And he stretches out his arms and he dies. Um, but mm. if it, it, to speak, like there he is praying for his persecutors when um, he's feeling this. He's saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. There's a little detail that I've, I've got to throw this in there. This is the Bible nerd coming out of me. But Please. Uh, do you know that when we studied this part uh, where Luke quotes um, the Psalms, where Jesus from the cross quotes uh, that Psalm that says, into your hands I commend my spirit. He says, Father, forgive me. Um, above all, Father, forgive me. It's introduced with not the verb he said in the simple past, but instead elegan means he was saying it's an imperfect, and it suggests that perhaps that he was repeating this like a refrain in a song, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. You know, giving for, giving to us uh, an excuse for, for what we're doing. I wonder if we're worthy of that excuse, by the way, but there he was praying for us anyway. This clip was sponsored by Hallow, which is the number one prayer and meditation app on the web. Go download their app by going to hallow.com slash mattfrad. When you sign up there, you get three months of their app, complete access for free. If at the end of the three months you feel like it's not worth your money, you don't have to pay a cent. But I think you will use it. I pay for it. My wife has it. My friends have it. It has sleep stories. It'll help you pray the rosary. It'll help you get into a prayer routine. 100% Catholic and super, super excellent. It actually just surpassed TikTok this month. I'm not even making that up. When I say that, it sounds like it's... No, I know. I, yeah. It's amazing. Hello, H-A-L-L-O-W dot com slash Matt Frad. Click the link in the description below so that they know we sent you.